Hello everyone and welcome back to another very exciting chess game from the history of chess from 1863 Paris. And in this chess game, white is Paul Morphy and his opponent is Jules Arnos de Rivere. But I will shortly call him de Rivere. And he was actually one of the strongest chess players in his era. He was the strongest chess player from France. The best chess player of France. But he was consistent too. He was the best chess player of France for 20 years. From late 1850s until late 1870s. So Derivere was not a joke. He was not a chess petser who has just learned how to play chess. And I'm also going to give you one another interesting information about Derivere. He played a match with Chigorin. Chigorin was a beast. And he played that match with Chigorin in 1883 when he way past his prime. But who won that match? Chigorin won. But he narrowly defeated Derivere. And he was actually almost losing that match. Derivere scored 4 points against Chigorin. Chigorin scored 5 points against Derivere. So we can say that Paul Morphy's opponent, Jules Arnos Derivere, was at Chigorin's caliber chess player. And I believe this chess game is also especially very important and valuable. Because for many years, after many years later, we see Paul Morphy playing a serious chess game against a serious opponent and he is not giving any odds. Also, he is not blindfolded. So we see the real Paul Morphy in this chess game. An extremely valuable chess game if you are interested in the chess history and chess classics. So I also want to show you this beautiful engraving. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful chess engravings, historical chess engravings ever. Look at this incredible wood chessboard. And it's amazing table. Of course, Paul Morphy is on the left. I'm sure after seeing so many Paul Morphy pictures, you have recognized Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy is on the left and Derivere, his opponent, is on the right. An amazing engraving. Okay, so I want to show you this absolutely incredible, awesome chess game between Derivere and Paul Morphy. So Paul Morphy, who has the white pieces, starts the game with pushing the pawn e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and we see the Italian game, knight to f6, d4. Exchanging the pawns, but Paul Morphy didn't capture back, he can always capture back. He captured, castling, knight to c3, knight to e5, defending the bishop, d5. Paul Morphy pushed the pawn, defending the knight, and Paul Morphy captured the knight, this is damaging the pawn structure, and then pushing the pawn. Checking the king, moving the king, knight to d7, bishop to d3, rook d8, and bishop to d2. Knight goes back, Derivere wants to relocate his knight, targeting on h7, but black knight is defending. The only defender is black knight, so pushing the pawn, but now getting closer with the queen. And already, at an early stage of this chess game, Paul Morphy is playing some dangerous looking moves against Derivere. Knight to e6, but in this position Paul Morphy played a very important move. Well, he pushed the pawn and he is advancing. So, first attacking the queen, but Paul Morphy is defending the queen easily after defending the knight. Attacking the important light square bishop. Paul Morphy played another important move. Well, Morphy pushed the pawn once again. He is advancing. And in this position, the threat is very simple. Capturing the pawn. So that is attacking the rook. After king takes pawn, capturing the pawn with the discovered check, double check. So f takes on e6 by Derivere. And is this losing a pawn by Paul Morphy? Well, Paul Morphy pushed the pawn. And after this move, black is in big trouble. So after thinking deeply, Derivere pushed the pawn and this is a discover attack to the queen, but Paul Morphy pushed the pawn, forking the king and the rook and capturing the rook. So there is no time for capturing the queen. But in this position, if something like king to h8, what happens then? Then simply capturing the pawn and this is losing. 
the bone is split. So as you can see all of the pieces of polymorphy is working perfectly. They are in perfect places. So in this position polymorphy push the pawn the best move. And then the Rivera also push the pawn but polymorphy is advancing again. Forking the king and the rook. And then capturing the rook. So queen takes on e8. And actually in this position black can reside. But the Rivera has still some hope. He is still hoping for the best. So after defending the queen he is counting on his double pawns in the center and maybe pushing the pawn is going to be his next threat would you defend the queen in this position well Paul Morphy is not defending the queen and he captured the pawn bishop takes on g6 what a move by Paul Morphy what an incredible move actually for the computer engine bishop takes on g6 was the best move so we see bishop takes on h3. If queen takes on g6, then rook takes on f8. King to g7. And then bishop to h6. Checking the king. Only move. And then checking the king. If king to g6, then rook to f6. So king takes on f7 and then losing the queen and losing the chess game. So in the real chess game, Paul Morphy is not defending the queen and he captured the pawn bishop takes on g6 not queen takes but bishop takes on h3 and paul morphy captured the queen bishop takes on g2 check king takes on g2 so he was going to lose the bishop anyway rook takes on e8 but the Rivera didn't like his chances after this position and he resigned what a game by paul morphy he crushed his opponent but actually this was an incredibly accurate chess game by Paul Morphy. Most of his moves were the moves of the computer engine. Incredible, especially for that time. Of course, the Rivera resigned because Paul Morphy is a rook up in a winning position. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time with more chess games of Paul Morphy. So, take care and bye bye.